Hello, my name is Allie Gray, and I am reporting live from Polk, the Polk County Courthouse in Des Moines, Iowa, where the important case of Tinker vs. Des Moines was just decided on just a few months ago. And we're going to go to the board for more on the story. To start, our story begins with John Tinker and his sister, Mary Beth Tinker, and their mother at an Iowa school board meeting. The story takes place at the Des Moines Independent Community School District on November 12, 1968, yet a final decision wasn't reached until February 24, 1969. A group of high school students met at 16-year-old Christopher Eckhard's home to silently protest against the Vietnam War back in 1965. Throughout the holiday season, the group bore black armbands. The principal of the school that they attended created a policy that stated that a student must remove this armband. The two students continued to wear them, but were later sent home. John Tinker, brother of Beth, also rebelled against the policy to follow his classmates' actions, and he was also sent home. The students returned back from Christmas break in January without their armbands, but they resorted to protesting and wearing black clothing instead. The parents later sued the school district because it tested the students' right of expression. The U.S. Court of Appeals of the Eighth Circuit dismissed the case because it ruled that the school's actions were reasonable in disciplining the students. The case later was taken to the Supreme Court. This case violated the First Amendment. The court decided that due to the First Amendment, school officials are not able to censor student speech unless it interferes with the educational process. Wearing the black armband did not serve as a disruption, and so the First Amendment protects the students' rights to wear them. In a 7-2 decision, the court ruled that neither the students nor teachers shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. School officials could only act if the students' freedom of speech disrupted the learning environment. The Justice Abe Fortes held that wearing the armbands was a representation of free speech, which was pure speech and symbolic speech. The Supreme Court also noted that the students never lost their rights to the freedom of speech under the First Amendment. This first political cartoon on the left expresses the students' ideas to originally wear the armbands to protest the war in Vietnam. In the next box, the principals are planning to make a rule to forbid these armbands. And in that last box, the students are really in a conflict between supporting this protest or getting suspended. So it goes to show that the conflict that students went through this political cartoon on the right shows the principal scolding the students for their ideas of wearing the armbands in protest of the war. And later we know that the judge decides that the principal's rule violated the Tinker's freedom of speech. And it just goes to show that wearing an armband is totally protected under our First Amendment right of expression. Here we have an excerpt from the Tinker vs. Des Moines qu case from Justice Fortes, who was the judge that ruled on the case, and he says, In the absence of a specific showing of constitutionally valid reasons to regulate their speech, students are entitled to freedom of expression of their views. Next, we have some photos sent in from the actual protests. The one on the left and the one at the bottom show the live protests that took place that wanted the war to end now, bringing the troops home, and really ultimately wanting peace in Vietnam. And in that picture on the far right, we look to see Beth and her brother, the Tinkers, who are really in charge of this whole protest for peace and their freedom of speech. Here, it's super cool to see that Beth and her brother, John, have retaken the original photo and the siblings continue to advocate for students' rights even today. Next, we're going to go over to Grant O'Doherty, who has more about this case and other cases that are related. And he's actually there live, so let's go over to him. Thanks, Allie. I'm here to talk about some of the dissents in the case. The primary dissent from Justice Black said the First Amendment does not give people the right to express any opinion at any time. He also mentioned how it is a myth to say that any person has a constitutional right to say what he pleases, where he pleases, and when he pleases. They also argued that the armbands worn by the students did cause a disturbance uh, because it took the students' minds off their work and it forced them to think about the emotional subject that is the Vietnam War. 
This ruling that limits the, school's, uh, the school officials' ability to maintain order would have a negative effect on the ability to run a functioning school. Now for connections to other cases. The first case is the West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett, 1943. This case featured public schools being required by the board to include a salute of the American flag as part of their activities. If schools did not comply, they could be charged with insubordination and face punishment. A certain number of Jehovah's Witness students sued the board because of a religious discrepancy due to this, and the Supreme Court ruled the mandatory salute to be unconstitutional. Another connection to a case is the Bethel School District No. 403 versus Frazier. Matthew Frazier made a speech full of obscenities and innuendos. The school attempted to discipline him, but he decided to sue. The Supreme Court sided with the school, and Chief Justice Warren Berger of the majority said schools have a responsibility to instill students with habits and manners of civility. Berger suggested that Frazier's speech undermined the school's responsibility. Therefore, he was not granted First Amendment protection. Since this case has occurred, this case has remained a precedent for the court to rule off of. It has allowed students to wear anti-abortion bands and pro-LGBTQ shirts, and it has encouraged students to protest across the nation when treated unjustly. Mary Beth Tinker continues to educate young people about their rights, and she also has an award named after her, named the Mary Beth Tinker Youth Involvement Award.